HIM TV people! Right then, this is a quick walkthrough on this video and this is going to explain to you some of the reasons why I think you need a project manager, an experienced one and the advantages of being able to claw back time when certain things pull you back on a job. So on this particular job, um, the elements were against us, it was cold outside, it's winter, Drying time was affecting us, and with my little keen eye and a few little tips that are inside this video, I found a little way of getting electric on there a bit sooner so we could get some more heaters in there to dry the place out, and we pulled back some time, so it might help you. So if you like the vibe, hit subscribe, people. Bonjour, people. This is the Santa's Grotto. It was one of the last videos now. We're near enough coming to the end, and we're still on schedule, even though it's the end of February, and that was the cut-off date with all the uh, extras that we had, all the little delays with the drying time. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I got around it, and thinking on your feet, it works sometimes. All right, let's go. So this one's going to be a quick walk around because, like I say. It's the mist coat's been done, most of the second fix has been done, the plumber's just in here finishing off. But he's hiding, I think. Um, <clears throat> a little tip, a little tip this is, is in these HMOs, can you see where we finished the laminate floor in here and left this tiled? We leave it tiled because we find, especially when, we, when we're managing HMOs ourselves, is even though there's normally storage outside for a bike rack, tenants generally favour putting bicycles in here and you know when when you're coming in and outside when it's sort of raining and snowing then there's all mud and all shit if it's just laminate floor and it's prone to getting damaged if you've got some sort of like a coconut shy mat or if you leave a tile surface at least it's hard wearing and it's easy to clean so top tip on a HMO there people there's not much to show you in this room because it's now it's now been designated as a storeroom as you can see. Um, however, some of the mess coats been done, the ceiling's been done. Um, but probably by the end of this week, this is all going to be done now. This is all things like the showers, the toilets, and stuff like that. Come this way. This is now the communal dining room and the kitchen. So you saw the other previous ones. We put a steel in across there, so now it's all been boxed in, it's been plastered. Um, some of the second fix has been done. So, that's it. Nice and just putting his, second, his first fix into the, uh, the pipe work there. That's nice and neat, isn't it? I'll show you the kitchen design on the next one because obviously it's sort of in and sort of out. Uh, we've fitted fitted new external door as well. Something else we've done on this one is we've used we've used a sensor lighting. So when you walk up, it's this one here. When you walk up, it's got an it's got an internal PIR on there, so it turns on it turns itself on and off when it detects movements. Windows have been installed. Mist coat's been done. The plumber's obviously in for doing the second fix and the showers and stuff, but not too much to show you. Look See the light? Yeah, it's turned off, hasn't it? There you go. It's magic. Simply magic. If you saw the previous video, I was talking about how the drying time's affecting... <coughs> excuse me, the drying time's affecting this project. Because obviously we were fighting the elements with it being cold. And to dry it out before we get the thingy, so I come up with an idea. So when I did a site inspection, I saw that the spark had already started doing his second fix. Mm -hmm. So downstairs where the kitchen was, there were certain walls that weren't plastered. So how the electrics work in a house is it's a ring circuit. So basically a wire goes out of the consumer unit, into one socket, out of that socket, into the next, so on and so forth, until it goes round and it goes back into the consumer unit. So, because I understand a little bit of how it works, I noticed that the upstairs, the two top floors have been done. The bottom floor hadn't been done, so we needed to get some sort of heat in here. But with it being a three-storey house, what the electricians do for safety, for health and safety, is they leave us a trailing socket downstairs. So that will only be on like a small breaker, so it wouldn't take the load of too many heaters. Sounds a little bit technical, but anyway. 
So I identified that downstairs there was a couple of, couple of walls that just needed to be plastered and then the electrician could come in and do his second fix downstairs. So I got the plasterer in straight away, we got those three or four walls plastered which meant the sparker could come in then, he finished his second fix off which meant all the plug sockets have been live on the property. And then hey presto, we could put a piece of plasterboard or a door over, over the hole, put a heater in here on low heat to air it out with a fan to dry it out, open the window a little bit and now all of a sudden we're painting. We're painting, so a little bit of a think, a little bit of noggy. Yeah, I think that, again, that helps you to alleviate the, the times on... The yeah, well, we, were, we well. were sort of two weeks behind, but mm. because I managed to find that cheat, yeah. with a little bit of experience, I've now brought it back the two weeks. So, we, you know, I've shaved, I've, I've lost... Back some, on schedule, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've lost some time on one hand, but I've gained it back on the other, so... Yeah. That's a proper important tip. Yeah. Use your noggin. <laughs> and it just stresses the importance of having a site manager that goes around on to sites, you know, yeah, to check week, things. To check things and then to solve problems because we you know we, we can have lots and lots of Gantt charts. Uh, but Gantt charts are a load of shit, don't bother them. <laughs> don't bother with them. We still need them in the beginning, but it needs to be flexible. Yeah, the trouble with the Gantt chart is you can spend too much time making it look pretty and scheduling everything in, but then how do you how do you schedule in the seasons? Because obviously in the winter it's going to have drying time issues because it's going to be that cold, it's going to take longer to dry. But then in the summer you're going to have the opposite effect where like, it's drying too quick and the, the paint and decorators got to do more sanding and filling. So that costs more time. So you can put a contingency in there, but then we're always being sort of pushed down on JCT contracts to say that I want it done on this date. Yeah. So projects like this, we do a full refurb, it becomes reactive responsive. So you have to be able to adapt to whatever you find and, and think on your feet. Now with a Gantt chart, it gives you an overall timeline, but the individual jobs and the things that come up Aunt, as an example downstairs, when we took when we took the ceilings out downstairs, there's no firewall between us and next door. So when this when the client comes at the end of this project to do a refinance and the surveyor goes round, if he sees that there's no firewall, he'll then not give it that, that client the valve. But obviously if you're on a bridge, you're relying on to come out that bridge by getting your refinance. Something stupid like that it's just just cost you thousands of pounds worth of you know, you've got to try and extend your bridge. Mm. So I like flexible thinking, so I use different things like scrum boards or I use Kanban boards to project manage because it's more reactive responsive. So I literally go on, online, I've made a master sort of template of the software that we use and I sort of go around and do these videos and I use these videos as my way of project managing all the projects. And if I see something, I can just quickly pick up your phone, take a photograph, put a note on there, the site manager, the people inside the office have all got access to it and that's how I do it. But I like the flexibility because with the experience I've got, all the jobs need some sort of flexibility with it and the Gantt charts feels too rigid. Yeah. So, that's my rant over, Gantt charts <laughs> are shit. <laughs> so, voila, nice big ceilings, painted white, reflects the light. Sorry, painted white, reflects yes, the light, my Perryton didn't know it. Um, another little tip we've had to do as well that I've seen missed on some of these HMOs is those of you that don't know, this is the purling, so this is, the, this is one of the main structures to the roof which, which is holding it all up, so you've got the rafters coming down sitting on top of there. Too many times I've seen on these properties whereby they've not been pink boarded, which is the fire protection. Mm -hmm. So if there's a fire in here, yeah. and that's left as naked wood or paint, which is flammable, yeah. you don't want the main structure of the roof potentially being on fire, because obviously the, damp, the lock can come down, you want some sort of protection. Yeah. So I see quite a few times where people actually leave that as exposed timber. It looks nice, but then in terms of like fire regs and health and safety, it, it, it depends, because obviously if it's existing, sometimes you don't need to do it, and aesthetically it is better. Mm -hmm. But when you leave it completely naked, it depends on the HMO officer and how anal he wants to be and also your building control. So for what for what it is, because mm -hmm. because plastering this fits this building, it looks better and you get a nice clean line. Yeah. And, and when the paint is cut in it, it's got something to cut into that's nice and straight as opposed to, you know, 
sort of iggledy piggledy natural wood because obviously yeah. the wood's going to shrink and shrink and whatever else over time so you're going to get cracks where this way it's just a better finish mm -hmm. so anyway if you get purlines box them in or fire retard them to some degree last room so this is room five it's a three-story house and as you can see the painters in here doing a mess coat mm -hmm. so <coughs> probably only about a week maybe two weeks before we have finished off this project the joiners will be finished by the end of this week they're, all, they're already fitting the doors mm -hmm. hm tv out yeah. people bye bye